Welcome back, nerd friends. We're back at the Nerd Bench one more time. We have some new products in the series. The Quick Run series got some G2 updates, and we're going to talk about these sensorless waterproof systems, what they're all about, applications, all that fun stuff. And uh, we did a little preview of these recently uh, with the pre-production samples that I have. These are the production box units. This particular one was a quality control item and the shrink wrap got removed by the office before they sent it to me, but we can still take a look at it because it's all intact. Pop open the box. This is the speed control. Of course, you get these ultra sweet plastic holders, your best friend in the whole wide world, the instruction manual and your sticker sheet. Now, do not lose this. The settings are in here and you're gonna wanna make sure that you keep track of those. Open this guy up, slides out through here. And there you have your shiny new WP-10BL120G2 speed control in the Quick Run series. These are very similar in size to what the old Max 10 series was. So we'll get my handy dandy calipers and we'll throw these on here. You see it's a big end, 53 the length, 39 the width and the height. We'll go right to the top of the case. We're gonna be 38 that way. We'll do it again in standard just in case. So the length is gonna be just a touch over two inches. The width is gonna be just a touch over an inch and a half. And the height is just under, uh, right at about an inch and a half. So I'll give you an idea there. See, so it does come with 12 gauge wire pre-installed, XT60 on the end, a very lengthy input harness, and that awesome double button speed control, or double button on off switch. You get the power button, and then for doing the calibration setup stuff. This guy does have four millimeter bullet plugs on the speed control itself, so your motor will either have to have those or you'll install those type of deal. The quick run, obviously, speed control, or motors do come with the four millimeter bullets installed. Speed control is rated for two to four S, the motor specs are a little quirky, so make sure you check that. For 4S, it's only rated with the larger size A-scale motors, the 42, 68 size motors, because to run on that higher voltage, you kind of need a bigger motor. The smaller motors aren't going to be well suited for the 4S applications. Also has a temp sensing fan, so don't be surprised if when you fire this thing up, the fan doesn't run right away. Fan only comes on when it gets hot, which is very cool. But for 2 and 3S applications, this is great for the like 3652 size motors or the 3660 size motors, what is normally a 540 or 550 size motor. The tuning on these speed controls is done through this dedicated programming port. You see you have a fan wire there with the fan built into the speed control, and then you have a port on the front for the tuning, and it is marked right there for the orientation of the plug. This guy does require the LED program card to do the tuning. It will not work with the LCD box and it will not work with the OTA programmer, the, the wireless device. Uh, it does have to have the LED program card. And as I mentioned before, you wanna hold on to the speed control instruction manual or get the link, cause it is in the description down below. Cause in here is your setting chart and the these boxes are all the same, they're just displays. So if you have one of these already, you can use this on the speed control, but the sticker, the setting numbers may not match. So to make sure that you're changing the settings correctly, inside this beautiful sheet of paper, right dead center, is the programmable items. And that'll tell you what all the settings that you have available and what values they have. So you have all these different settings and then these are the things that they have available for you. Uh, we're gonna go through all of this here in just a second. But first, let's take a look at the motor. Open this guy up. This particular one is the 3652. These are 540 size. 36 stands for the diameter, 36 millimeter diameter and a 52 millimeter length. We also offer these in a 3660 size. Another difference is these have the eighth inch standard size small shaft and the longer 550 size or the 3660 size motors are gonna have the bigger five millimeter diameter shaft for this. Very nice sealed up sensorless motor. I've been running one of these in my two wheel drive slash over at the Peacock pit and it's, we run like a wet track almost, so it gets real muddy. And it has been a peace of mind to have this sealed up motor in there with nothing to really worry about. And these things perform awesome too. We're gonna to talk about the settings that I like to run to make all that happen. But we do have a bunch of different KVs for these as well. The link will be in the description down below with what those KVs are. But so three, five different motors available all together in the Quick Run series. The 3652s go from a 3250 KV, there's a 4000 KV and a 5400 KV. And then in the 3660 size, we have two different KVs, a 3150 KV as well as a 3700 KV. So like I said, the 3660 are the longer 540 size and the 3652 are these normal kind of 540 size. So we're gonna jump into the tuning. I'm gonna show you the settings and talk about what, the, what all that does. But before that, 
if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're going to do speed control tuning, make sure before you do any of this that you calibrate the speed control to the radio. I'll show you the calibration at the end of the video, but just know that going into this that before anything will work to get correctly on any speed control, you have to calibrate it to the radio so that it learns the neutral, the full throttle, and the full reverse. And if you ever have any problems with that calibration, like it doesn't start or it gets stuck at one of the steps, check out our servo test video in the link down below. That'll show you how to troubleshoot that. All right. So... First up, we have uh, 10 settings available. Each of them has up to nine different options. Some of them only have a few, and we're gonna run down these right now. Uh, number one is the running mode. That's so you can turn the reverse off for racing applications, or if you wanna make it like a rock crawler and have instant reverse, you can do that there. Uh, voltage cutoff, you can turn off your LiPo protection. So if you're using nickel metal hydride batteries, you can run them by disabling your LiPo cutoff. And then you have the different voltage cutoffs and they're listed as per cell. Something to keep in mind, your batteries may not always match the per cell cutoff voltage because of the various states of load that they get under, temperature, stuff like that. So don't be surprised if they don't match exactly what your per cell setting is. And the reason they're even adjustable is because of that exact reason. So you can squeeze more or less runtime out of your battery. Default settings are usually very very safe. Uh, punch setting is how linear the throttle is. So the lower that punch setting is, the more kind of tape delay there's going to be a delay on the throttle. So if you click the throttle very rapidly, lowering the punch setting will make that not happen. If you want your throttle to be linear, you have good battery packs, good plugs, all that fun stuff, level nine is going to be one-to-one -one throttle. So if you give it the berries on the throttle, the speed control is going to do everything it can to do the exact same. Um, up next, setting number four is drag brake force. This is brakes at neutral. So when you let off the brakes, it'll or when you let off the throttle, it'll apply the brakes when you get to neutral and make like a coast brake. So it's an automatic brakes that happen. It's real good for high traction conditions. If you need to get on the brakes a lot and you're braking like every corner type of deal, or maybe the car coasts too much into a corner, you can use this to set that. And then if you do these in a rock crawl, you can crank it all the way up as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, max brakes force number five is our brake power setting. If a lot of times the full brake is way too much, you lock up the tires, spin out, all that fun stuff. So you can lower that to have limited brake power as well, so that you can give full brake on your radio and not get full brake from the speed control. So that's kind of nice. Max reverse force, much the same way. A lot of times full speed reverse is way too much for us to operate smoothly. We're not very good at pushing the throttle like we are at squeezing it. So the max reverse force allows you to turn down the reverse speed um, or turn it all the way up too if you need to. Neutral range is the zone between the first um, throttle pulse and the first reverse pulse. So if you get like real inconsistent drag brakes or you get real inconsistent reverse, like it, you have to tap the reverse a couple times to make it work, that's because the speed control has to see neutral from the calibration before the reverse will work. And on some radios, the trigger gets dusty inside of your radio and that, that pot that's in there, it's like a mechanical rheostat, wears out and you don't get the same neutral. So neutral range is there to allow you to increase uh, when your neutral is kind of bouncy on your radio, so to speak. Timing is electronic timing advance to the motor itself, and it gives it evenly across the you know, RPM range. So it makes the motor faster. If you're in a situation where you don't have any gears and the motor's nice and cool and you want to make it a little bit quicker, timing allows you to do that. It adds timing advance to the actual firing of the motor to make it go a bit quicker and at the cost of temperature. So don't use it unless the motor's nice and cool already. LiPo cells allows you to set the specific voltage for the speed control. So auto mode, if you're going to run two cell, three cell type of thing, switch battery packs, auto is great. That way you don't have to change. But typically you're going to leave it on one of the, the whatever battery voltage you're going to run. It's not super common for a setup to run awesome on two different voltages. A lot of times it'll run great on a low voltage and kind of get too hot on the higher voltage. So it's kind of better to get your build specific to a voltage. But I do have some of my two cell setups that I run that probably be okay for three cell. They're just gonna be kind of way too fast to drive, so to speak. And the final one, number 10, your BEC voltage. That is the power to the receiver and the servo. So if you run high voltage servos, that setting allows you to bump that up. So we're just gonna run through, just so you get an idea of how this operates. The tuner plugs into the front, and like I said, these are marked with positive, negative, and the little signal symbol. So I plug this guy in the top there. This guy's plugged into the ESC port on the top of that. I hook a battery up to the speed control, turn the speed control on, the lights come on, they go off, and they come back on, and then you can get through the settings. So you can cycle through the different items that you have, and then you can change the value. So if, uh, if I look, if I remember in the chart, uh, let's go down and turn the punch up. Setting number three is the punch. I want to crank that all the way up to number nine for my 
setup that I run. So I go down to three and then I go value until I get up to number nine and then I hit okay to save. And there you have it, setting saved, good to go. Turn the speed control off and you're all set. You unplug it and you're back in action. You get your new combo. We're gonna plug these guys in and get them calibrated to a radio so you can see everything working. The tabs here are marked A, B, and C and typically you go A, B, and C on this as well. If you're going to change the direction of the motor, sensorless setups, you can use the wires to change the direction of your brushless combo. Always go B to B, middle wire of the motor to the middle wire of the speed control, and then you can use the outside two to change the direction. So like after you calibrate it, if you give it throttle and it goes the wrong way, you can use the wires to correct that. So this guy is going to be A. This guy is going to be B. Okay, so well... We got everything connected and we're gonna run through calibration. So the speed control always goes in channel number two on your receiver and the direction does matter. On most receivers, the black wire of your speed control harness is gonna to go to the outside or the thin edge of the receiver. Some receivers are gonna be damaged by plugging this backwards and these will fit both directions. So be careful when you're plugging in your throttle channel, but it's generally gonna be number two, so I got that hooked up there. The speed control is connected to a battery pack and we are gonna go through this calibration process. It starts by holding down the set button and then turning the speed control on and then we'll walk through the steps. So we're gonna hold down the set button, turn the speed control on. It's gonna to start to beep at us or blink the light. There you go. That's asking us to set neutral. So we set neutral by tapping. It gets one beep. You go full throttle and hold and you tap the button again. That sets full throttle. You go full reverse and hold it. Tap the button again. And then you get three beeps for the reverse being set and you're set. It beeps once, twice, three times as you go through that process. And then when you're done, or you get basic operation. Uh, you can see the light is off for neutral, and then as you go through the throttle, it's red, and then as you get to full throttle, it turns green. Don't free rev your motor, that's not good for it. This battery's only like half charged, so it's not that bad. But that is basic calibration. So if for whatever reason you go through that calibration process and you get stuck and it doesn't want to work, uh, there's a link in the description down below for our servo test video. Usually what causes is an output problem from the radio. There's something way off in neutral, it's not, the throttle channel doesn't work, there's not enough brake travel, the ABS is on, stuff like that. As always, there is a link in the description down below with all the hard specs and details, BEC, power rated currents, all that fun stuff. But this covers the basics on the install. A lot of folks ask us what these are going to be used for. 10th scale applications primarily, uh, two-wheel drive short courses, two-wheel drive buggies, four-wheel drive short course trucks, some of the 10th scale monster trucks. Things like that are going to be great for these quick run combos. They have lots of decent tunability, I'd say. Nothing compared to like what our race vehicles are, but I've driven this system quite a bit in my my two-wheel drive slash at the Peacock Pit, and it drives great. Like, I didn't think that I was going to like a sensorless system, but the tech has come quite a long way since then. So uh, very impressed for me to, to run this around. But as always, folks, thanks for tuning in. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, maybe something about this or a topic that you want us to discuss here on The Charlie Show, shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Say, Charlie, we want you to do a video on this, and I will do my best to do a video on that. We also have a podcast where each and every episode we give away Hobbywing stuff. It is called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. You can find it on your favorite podcast service. Just look up the title of the podcast, RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. You'll find out how to enter to win just by listening to an episode. And of course, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Another episode of The Charlie Show, new every Tuesday, right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time.